and I thought, you know, from what I was shown, he was white. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Now, it's very important that you understand this because not only did I think Jesus was white, I thought the whole Bible was white. And I thought we were just the bad cats. Black, uh, uh, the black people in the Bible were the curse race. Now, there is a question that has lingered around many people's mind in recent times. And this is the question of whether Jesus Christ was white or black. Many people have said that it doesn't matter the color of Christ, be it white or black, that doesn't matter. What matters is that Jesus Christ existed and there are certain things that are attributed to him. So there are pastors who have always come out to talk about this in an in-depth manner. And I like what I'm hearing from this pastor that I'm about to play you his video. So. He was talking about this topic and the angle that he brought out is something that I think we all must listen to. So let's watch this then come back and share our thoughts together. Uh, Hosea chapter 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Amen. Say knowledge. Say knowledge. Amen. So that means because we don't know some things, we are destroyed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I told you the greatest way to, to, the greatest way to kill a man is to make the man think you're not trying to kill him. Amen. He will be around you never knowing that you are his assassin. Oh, the, the devil has been really careful at causing us to believe that there's nothing really going on and this is all in our head. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? But the Bible says oh, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Say knowledge. Number one, knowledge is knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number two, knowledge is knowledge of self because when people come to Christ, they find out who they are. Amen. You find out you're really a drug dealer. You was just doing that. Say amen. Because you was living in somebody else's view of you and not in God's view. You hearing what I'm saying? Are y'all there? So knowledge is what we need in order to overcome anything. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Truth. Say truth. Are y'all there? Now the Bible says my people are struggle for lack of knowledge. Those that has rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Are you there? So when we hear the truth, and we don't do the truth then and we don't do what God is saying then he rejects us are y'all hearing what I'm saying are y'all there so um, um, uh, John 8 and 32 says and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free say the truth the truth shall make me free say the truth shall make me free dancing shall make me free shouting will make me free Give it make me free. Doing good things should make me free. Being a good person will make me free. Come on, I'm trying to show y'all something. That it's only the truth that'll make you free. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So enough for our enemy to destroy us, he has to keep us from the truth or confuse the truth or make the truth so unavailable that we have nothing to stand upon because the truth is what you stand on. Every real revolution is started by truth. It's truth that causes people to, to, to go against tanks and guns with no, with no bullets. It's, it's truth that causes people to lay their life down, not caring about dying because they see the tyranny is so unbearable that they would rather die than to live, under, than to live as a slave. Say amen. It was the truth that brought the call slaves to understand that we were not three-fifths human, but we were men who were reduced to being animals so that people could profit off of our misery. Say amen. So the truth is what will set us free. So the problem with, with the race, especially the, the black race, and I told y'all I'm not I'm not against no races or nothing like that. But when we talk about our when we talk about the truth, they call it reverse racism because we're talking about the truth. Now when they taught us about Christopher Columbus, it wasn't racism. When he when they came and called and conquered a people and said they discovered a people's house. Wasn't racism when they came over and saw Indians living here and killed them all off took 600 of them back to Spain as slaves but that wasn't racism we celebrate them say amen but when we start talking about the truth when we start finding out the truth then all of a sudden oh now why y'all bringing that stuff up because it was the lack of knowledge that keeping us in slavery in our mind it's the lack of knowledge that makes us be the worst and go for the worst smoke the worst drink the worst look the worst say amen so the lack of knowledge is the problem are y'all there so when we start di diving into truth, you know, never get intimidated because the truth will make you free. It will make others mad. But you will be free. Amen. All right. Now, I want to start, um, 
a little bit in the beginning, just in the book of Genesis, amen. I'm not going to start at Genesis 1. That's all self-explanatory. I did a lot of work on Noah, amen. So what I want to start with, is where I really want to talk about Noah, amen. Because when I first read the Bible, I told you my mother had a big, you know, that big gigantic Bible on the coffee table, under the table, somewhere in the house, amen. And I remember being a child, I grabbed it and I started flipping through the pages and I started looking at it and I saw the pictures and, and you know, I saw Moses and I saw Abraham, say amen. I saw David killing the lions and Daniel in the lion's den, say amen. These are pictures that stuck with me as a child. Uh, Y'all heard what I'm saying? I saw, um, then I uh, saw certain movies like the commandments and I saw that Moses was was a white man and the, the children of Israel were white the Egyptians was white come on the Egyptians was white are y'all hearing what I'm saying Moses was Charleston he, he, uh, uh, Heston are y'all there then are y'all there I saw that when I was a child so the, the, the cover the front cover on the Bible was a white man with long hair and blue eyes and so I, I figured that God was white why because that's what they said he was Say amen. I had no I had no knowledge to didn't know how to study, wouldn't have knew what book to go get to find out. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Other than the Bible. Say amen. Now that was nothing wrong with the Bible. It was something wrong with the interpretation of it. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So uh then I grew up a little bit and I saw the story of Jesus. Amen. And Jesus was white, and broke, and ran with twelve white broke cats, and everybody else in the Middle East uh, was, was, was broke and when he went into Egypt he was white and broke say man you know and so uh, I, I assumed that, that he was white I remember the, the passion of Christ came out and so you know so I saw a white man that ran with 12 white men that went about loving people and healing people say man now no matter uh, now, no matter what color he was, I loved him because I knew what he done with me. Jesus was an experience. It wasn't a color with me, it was an experience. So I loved, if he was white, I loved him even though he was white. If he was Chinese, I would have loved him, say amen. Because he has the power to take away sin. He has the power to forgive me, keep me from a devil's hell, say amen. Love me so much that he would die for me. So that's where my love comes from. But I had to learn to identify. See, there was, I needed to identify with him. And I thought, you know, from what I was shown, he was white. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Now, it's very important that you understand this because not only did I think Jesus was white, I thought the whole Bible was white. And I thought we were just the bad cats. Black, uh, uh, the black people in the Bible were the curse race because, uh, when uh, I'm uh, uh, Noah, after the flood, y'all remember Noah. Noah had three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. And Ham, were the uh, from the descendants of Ham, come the Cushites or the Ethiopians. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? And the, because the Bible says Ham went, Noah was drunk in his tent, and Ham went in and saw his father's nakedness, and went out and showed his, told his brothers to come and showed his father's nakedness to us. And Noah woke up and cursed Ham's son, Cain. Say, man, Ham had, I believe, four sons. It's Canaan, Miserim, Put, and uh, Cush. Are y'all there? Oh, Nimrod, was it? Was it? Yeah, Cush. It was Cush. Now, um, now, the way that scholars have taught this, now, what you have to understand is the way our history works is um, people that have taught history already have a view of what history is supposed to be. So if I am if I am supposed to be superior anything I find out that does not uh, uh, back up that I will not tell you or I will cover it up say amen so uh, our history was taught to us by people who were racist themselves are you understanding what I'm saying and you say what's it got to do with church everything the, it's the truth that's gonna set us free I want to know the whole truth see I used to study the Bible and didn't see any of this stuff because I didn't I didn't think it really mattered but if it really didn't matter, then who thought to change black people to white people on, in a movie? Who thought? Who thought to paint the picture of Jesus Christ? What gall and boldness do you have to change the picture of who he, what he looked like to make it look like your race? So if it wasn't, if, if it was no issue there, then why did, would you make him in your image? Why couldn't he have been Chinese? Come on. Why 
couldn't Jesus been Indian? Why do you have to be, why did he have to be the color of the people who wrote the book? Amen. So when we went to school, we learned about, on, 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, and he just discovered the new world. Say, man. And we learned about Cortez, how he just went down and got all the gold out of, you know, like what nobody living in these places. Are y'all there? Now, the reason why I want to start with Noah is because we need to understand that Noah had three sons. Say three sons. Now, it's very important you understand that Noah had three, all his three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, by his one wife. You got to understand that because if you don't understand that, then you will think that um, he had children by different women. Now, depending on the children, the women would have been the mixing of what race, they would have mixed their races. But the Bible says Noah was perfect in his day, which means Noah had pure DNA. He had not been mixed up, so he was still with his wife. His sons were pure. Say amen. Come on. So because his sons was pure, when Noah had sex with his wife, they produced three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Say amen. Now the Bible says Ham had a, uh, Noah had a son named Ham, and Ham, we know that, that the Cushites, he, he had a, Ham had a son named Cush, and Cush is Ethiopia. Come on. Now, what I want to tell you is, how does a white man have a son that is black? When the Bible is telling us that the Ethiopia, Ethiopia is the only land that is still there, that has still had the same people in that land. You can trace Ethiopia way back to Nubia, which Nubia was the city up under Egypt. And they were black. The Nubians were black people. The Nubians are Cush's people. Cush comes from Ham. Come on. Ham had another son, the Miserim. Miserim name means bondage. That's what they called Egypt. So, so Egypt comes from a black man named Ham who had a son named Bondage. So Ham had a son named Miserim who, who was the brother of Cush and Cush was black. Say so, amen. So I, me and my brother have the same mother and the same father and uh, we look same. So if the Bible's telling me that Cush was from Ethiopia, is where we get the Ethiopians, the Miserum is where we get Egypt, then how, uh, how was Noah white? Come on, I told you I'm going to teach you, I want you to think. Y'all got, got to feel me because I'm going to take some turns out there. And you say, what's this got to do? Identity. The Bible says in the last day, truth, uh, uh, knowledge shall be increased. We need to know. Our race was turned on his head and made to be the scourge of the earth because our history was hijacked by people who keep wanting to go back say they took the pyramids. So I tell my wife yesterday, I said, you know how it was History Channel? Oh, they won't leave Egypt alone. It's every five minutes, it's Egypt, Egypt, Egypt. Egyptology, not the, they're not trying to, it's not the study of Egypt. Egyptology is them trying to refute the evidence that's there. Say amen. So when they dig up the mummies, and the mummies don't, ain't the color they want. Say amen. Are y'all there? Then they don't talk about that mummy. Or they, or they give you a recreation of what they might have looked like. And all of a sudden, they, get, they turn into these European features. But the, the, the hieroglyphs on the wall shows what they look like. How we have been bamboozled so easily when the hieroglyphs, you know, the cave painting. And you see if you study Egyptology, they have chiseled all the face off of all of the all the hieroglyphs because somebody went through that whole land and robbed all them pyramids and went in there and saw you mean to tell me 
the people we got enslaved right now built this we can't uh oh we gonna have to destroy the image of these people because a man will never these black folk will never be slaves if they find out they built this now when Egypt was built the white race was in caves now you know they say the first man came from Africa right they called him the Neanderthal man now that is some eye-opening sermon there by the preacher and I think it is something that all of us must always be ready to really listen to and I did some research here and what I found out is quite intriguing and interesting at the same time so the Bible has been historically misinterpreted or distorted to justify racial biases including false claims about black people some of these misinterpretations have been used to legitimize slavery, colonialism, and systemic racism. However, it is essential to clarify that these claims are not intrinsic to the Bible texts themselves, but arise from selective readings, cultural prejudices, and deliberate distortions. This is the thing that is coming out. There are a lot of things that have always been distorted or used religiously with the name of ensuring that systemic racism or even racial prejudices continue to exist, we see the representation of the Bible as something that is quite white, as the pastor has put it. So one of the ways through which this Bible has been distorted or misinterpreted is the use of the quote, curse of harm. One of the most pervasive misinterpretations is the so-called curse of harm. In the story, Noah curses his son, Ham's descendants, particularly Canaan, for Ham's disrespectful behavior. Over centuries, some scholars and theologians distorted this narrative, claiming that Ham's caste justified the enslavement of black people. They falsely argued that Ham's descendants were black and that this caste ordained their subjugation. However, the Bible does not describe Ham's descendants as African, nor does it connect this caste to their skin color. This misinterpretation served as a theological justification for slavery during colonial times, especially in Europe and in the Americas. The Mark of Cain. Another false claim is the interpretation of Mark of Cain after Cain kills Abel. God places a mark on Cain to protect him from being killed. In some historical context, this mark was falsely associated with the black skin suggesting that black people were cursed by God. This notion is entirely unsupported by the text itself, which makes no reference to race or skin color. Yet, it, has, it was used to reinforce racial hierarchies and justifying discrimination. So there are different ways through which racial prejudices have been used or referred to when handling issues relating to the Bible. Another thing is slavery in the Bible. While the Bible does mention slavery, especially in the Old Testament, this slavery was not based on race, but rather on war, debt, or servitude. However, European colonial powers and pro-slavery advocates in the Americas cherry-picked biblical references to justify the transatlantic slave trade using passages like Ephesians 6.5 out of context. These claims were manipulated to suggest that the Bible condoned race-based slavery even though the text condemns mistreatment and calls for kindness towards servants. Another thing is the Ethiopian Acts. In contrast to these false claims, the Bible includes positive depictions of black people, such as Ethiopian eunuch who is baptized by Philip and becomes one of the earliest Christian converts. This story, this story counters racial interpretations by showing inclusion and equality in early Christianity. In conclusion, the Bible has been manipulated by some to support false and harmful claims about black people. However, these interpretations reflect human prejudice rather than the teachings of the biblical texts themselves. So this thing is in a larger way talking about how people have used the Bible to justify oppression towards black people. But then even this research has not deeply looked into how the Bible is largely white and not black. You know, there are those who have always said, why is it that Africans must convert from their African practices and adopt new practices that are largely Western to be accepted by this Christ or even this God? So that is why you find that most Africans tend to feel 
that the Bible does not represent them, the Bible does not talk about them, and the Bible has been whitened to make black people look inferior. Tell me down in the comment section what to think about this. And if you're watching us for the first time, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and also share. Thank you, and may the good Lord bless you. Goodbye.